This video is for the exercise Type Mask Tool. And in this exercise, we'll create a type mask and then fill it with an image. This is what the finished product project should look like. Now, the first part is we're going to do a horizontal type mask. And for this, we need the Fuji JPEG. Now, once we've gotten our image, we're going to copy, make a copy of this image. And we do that by selecting the image. We could do that by Control A and then copy by Control C on the keyboard. Our next step is to create a new document. And we can do that either by going to File and New or by Control, pressing Control N. We're going to name this file Fuji Text. And we are asked to make the width and height 5 inches by 5 inches. And the resolution is 170, which is what they ask in the project. So we can say OK to this and open our new document. Then we're asked to use the character palette to set our font settings. And we'll find that palette. This is the symbol for our character palette. And if it's not listed in your palette section here, you can always go to Windows on the main menu and select Character. Now it asks for Arial, which it is already, the setting is set for that, and Black at 100 points. So we can type that in. Say and that's okay. Then we're asked to select the horizontal type mask, which is this one, and to type the name Fuji. So we'll just click here in anywhere and just type Fuji in capital letters. Now you just bring it back over a bit, center it on the page. Then it asks that we make some changes to, to the um, type. So we would select the letters by sliding our cursor over and then going to the character palette. It asks to change the tracking settings to minus 50, which it's already. But this is what the tracking um, brings the letterings closer together or further apart. So we'll set it back to that minus 50. OK, perfect. And once we are satisfied, once we set those settings, we can check the commit. I'll click on the, the commit check mark. And there you see we have the selection outline in the shape of the text. Now the cool part, we're going to paste the image that we copied from step two into the outline text. So let's do that by going to edit, special, paste special, and then paste into. Voila. Then we got our, our text is filled with the, the image from that we copied previously. Now we can make adjustments to the image by uh, selecting, making sure that the image thumbnail in the layers panel is selected. And then if we control T, we see the free transform um, selection is um, given. We can make it larger to adjust the size that it fits. And we can see the mountain in the back a little better through the, the letterings. Once we're satisfied with the changes, we can click on the accepted check mark or the commit check mark. Just to point that in step seven, it asks that you uh, control click on the thumbnail of the image. And what that does is it um, creates a selection um, outline around the selected object. But in, for the purpose and intent of what we need to do with step seven, it's not required. You can just um, select, I'll just deselect the 
selection, you can just select the thumbnail and then do your control T to get your trans free transform transform um, box around your um, work. Well, the next uh, step, step nine, asks that we select the Fuji mask um, thumbnail. We can click on that, and we're going to add a layer style to this um, to this outline. It asks that we put, use stroke. And to set the size to 10 pixels, there you see, and we're also going to change the color to a navy. Do that, and so any dark blue is fine. You can make that whatever choice, whatever darker color that you like. Say OK. And we'll also add a bevel. You can check that, and then we'll just accept the default settings. OK. Our next step is that we're going to type our name just above the, the word Fuji. And we're asked to select the horizontal type tool this time, which is this one. And we're just going to type our name. I'm just I'm going to write a line just just to make it easier, typing, and we're going to type now. As you can see, it it um, is my type is in the last settings that I had. The size and spacing, everything will be the same from oh, when we typed Fuji. So I'm just going to make this smaller. Well, let's see what 14 looks like. And we're going to move it here. Okay, that's maybe a little bigger. Just highlighted it, and then we can change the settings again. Okay, that's a little better. And then accept. Now we're going to create a background color for the. Uh, uh, we're going to select a color, sorry, for the background, and it asks that we use the eyedrop tool and select a, a blue color from the Fuji um, image. So we're going to just click here. That looks like a nice blue. And then we're going to select the background. And with our paint bucket tool, we're going to create the background color. Now on to step 12, we're going to add a little effect with our um, paintbrush. Now it asks that we add the special effects brushes, which we get by going to the um, pop-out window or drop fly-out window, and we're going to attach or append the special effects brushes. And press append. And we're asked to look for the azalea brush at 60, uh, 69, uh, 69 point. We click on that one. This is it here. And it also asks that we press D to reset the default colors for your foreground and background colors. So we press D. It goes back to the black and white. So now that our brush is selected, we're going to sprinkle some of the azaleas on the background. So just make sure again that your background layer is the active layer. And there we go. Be as creative as you like. Placement is thoroughly up to you. All right, that's done. The next step, 13, it asks that we crop um, the excessive space that's uh, around our Fuji uh, lettering. I'm just going to add a few more of the azaleas a little closer under the Fuji around. And I think I'm going to change my, go back to text, 
my name. I can just double click on the the T in the on the text layer, and it will select uh, my name. And I'm going to change the color to to white, the font color to white. Just so I think it will look a little better, stand out a little better on the on the background. So let's do that. We can set this to. Enter, and I, and we're going to accept, and I'm going to add just a drop shadow to make it stand out a little better as well. Drop shadow and just accept the default settings. Okay, so that looks a little better. Now let us crop, make this a little smaller to finish off our project. And I'm going to bring in a little more of the azaleas at the bottom. Okay, and then once we're satisfied, we can um, click on the commit check mark. And there we have it.